We return now to President Trump's actions at the NATO summit and questions from within his own party about his temperament in dealing with the foreign leaders there. For more on that, I spoke a short time ago with John Kasich, the Republican governor of Ohio and former presidential candidate. I began by asking Governor Kasich about why he is speaking out about the president's foreign policy. Look, my concern is this alliance that we have, the relationships that we've had that emerged after World War II, and many of the unilateral actions that we've taken, whether it's withdrawing from the Paris Accord, the imposition of tariffs based on what I think are flimsy grounds, the unilateral withdrawal from the Iran agreement, the withdrawal of PTT, the disaster at G7, I see the fraying of a relationship that has kept the peace for 70 years uh, in somewhat at risk, and I'm very concerned about it. I didn't come to criticize him or level personal attacks. I am worried about the direction, the strength of this alliance, because it's important we are a strong team. Well, today, this morning in Brussels, before he left, the president said we made tremendous progress at this meeting. He talked about how the U.S. is committed to a strong NATO. Um, so I guess my question is, even if he kicks up a lot of dust, which his supporters acknowledge, if in the end there's results, if the allies, for example, are putting more money into defense, he's taking credit for it. Well, well first What's of all, I, th I, th I think there's a wrecking ball uh, diplomacy here, that we go in, we stir everything up. And you've got to remember that the leaders of these countries, uh, you know, they represent their nations and they also are leaders of their nation. And when we start talking about is Germany under the influence of Russia or when we impose tariffs on these countries uh, on the basis of national security grounds, it creates a disharmony. Now, in terms of the 2 percent, they had committed to this four years ago. And I hope they've accelerated it. Look, this has been so many presidents and congresses have asked him to do more, and I'm glad the president raised it. But I don't think he's raising it in the right way. It's not in the, in the, in using the diplomacy that I think strengthens us, but causes deep resentment. And look at some of the comments of people who were not in those meetings. The resentment is growing, and there is a question of trust. And That's what do you, a problem. And excuse me, what are you worried is going to happen? Well, I'm not worried anything's going to happen today, and I, I'm, I hope that these, this fraying relationship will, uh, will be repaired. But, you know, words matter. Approaches matter. And so getting a little bit more spending out of them, that's a good thing, but what, have you, what price have you paid in terms of disunity over the long run? And, and Judy, this is not, this is, I don't even want to have to do this. I don't want to have to say this, but somebody's got to say these things. Somebody has to speak out on these tariffs, which... Uh, Frankly, there's flimsy excuses for, uh, for being able to move forward on them. The, the America alone philosophy, I don't think it's good for us. Now, look, the president was elected. I was not. I'm not doing this to advance myself, only to point out there's a difference here with some people and the president. Why don't you think other Republicans who share your views are speaking out? Well, we actually heard a couple peeps out of the United States Senate. They actually passed a non-binding resolution overwhelmingly on this, the importance of NATO, They've also uh, passed a, a non-binding resolution on trade, uh, registering their deep disagreement with the president. So they're beginning to do it in terms of, uh, you know, there's a tribal effect. It, it was there when Obama was president. We're seeing it now with, with President Trump. And you respect the office, but you don't have to kowtow. You don't have to say, I don't have any reason for being here. But you think that's what they're doing? They're kowtowing? I think they have been, yes. I think maybe they're coming out of, uh, out of this stupor that they've been in up there. I mean, they don't say boo about anything. And if you, I hear, I'm not here all the time, but if you talk to them privately, they sort of have a different message in private than they have in public. And that doesn't mean they have to have a war with the president. I don't want to have a fight with the president, but there's, there, when there are policy differences, and I'm not interested in the personal uh, character attacks on the president. I don't do that. I'm not going to do it. But there are dramatic policy differences that I think undermine our ability to have a team of nations that support the, the values that we have believed in for 70 years. One more foreign policy question. The president, as you know, meets on Monday with Vladimir Putin. They're going to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Uh, he has said uh, in the last few days that this is going to be easier than his meetings with the European allies. Nancy Pelosi, the House Minority Leader, said today that the, she said she wants to know what the Russians have on Donald Trump, quote, politically, financially, and personally. Do you have questions about that? No, I, that's not what enters into my mind. What enters into my mind are, are, are concerns when Donald Trump says that perhaps if Putin asks us to 
call off military exercises in the Baltics. You know, maybe we'll do it. Or, uh, you know, not being tough enough with him on the way they've disrupted elections, not only ours, but around the world. And, uh, and don't be saying that people in Crimea speak Russian, so maybe, you know, that annexation wasn't illegal. I mean, those are things I disagree with. But the conversation that he will have at this summit is very important even though we fundamentally disagree with much of what Russia stands for today, but we need to have additional arms control talks and agreements to uh, begin to limit our arsenals. Without doing that, I think it poses risks for the world. But let's not lose sight of who we're dealing with. You know, George Bush went and said he looked into Putin's eyes and looked all the way into his soul. Uh, you know, I don't know which side of Putin he was looking at that day. You've got to be really tough-minded when it comes to dealing with an adversary who used to be such an important KGB official. The administration and the its immigration policy, yes. separating families at the border. Uh, there's been so much focus on this the last few weeks. The administration announced late last night that they are going to now reunite all children under the age of five with their parents, with the exception of something like 46, who still have, there's still some issues. The president is saying people should stay away from the border, whether they have children or not. They don't. They're not welcome in this country unless they're here illegally. He says, basically, what my opponents want is they just want open borders. They want everybody to be able to come in. Well, I, I think it's irresponsible for the Democrats to say we ought to abolish ICE, that we ought to have open borders. I don't know. They're way out and le they're beyond left field. I don't even know where they are. But however, the idea that we would separate families at the border, to me, is, is not an American value. I mean, when we see this, look, everybody came out against it. The administration has now reversed its policy. Judy, of course, we have to have strong borders. But we also need to have an effective policy that deals with our neighborhood. If you're in Guatemala, for people that watch this show, you're in Guatemala, you're a mom, and your daughter is being threatened with rape or your son being murdered, of course you're going to get the heck out of where you live, and you're going to come to the United States and seek asylum. So we need to have more asylum judges. We need to have facilities where families can be housed together. You know, give us your tired and your poor as part of what that Statue of Liberty is about. So I believe an economic and security policy that would be directed at Guatemala, El Salvador, uh, Honduras is something that we should think about because all these problems can't be solved at the border. Finally, uh, Governor, you uh, say that you haven't decided whether you're going to run for president. <laughs> that's a, that's a uh, good, look, I wouldn't be on if you had, weren't asking me. But I don't know what I'm going to do. You're too. writing. Uh, you're writing opinion pieces. You're yeah. traveling. You're going to be speaking in New Hampshire the week after the sure. uh, the midterm elections. Great opportunity to do that. Uh, what would it take for you not to run for president? Here's what we know. It's very hard to predict what's going to happen in the next five minutes in politics today than over the period of the next month. So we'll see what happens. And I, I will also tell you that my future, I mean, I control my future to some degree, but my future is to some degree also in the hands of the Lord. And I don't know where he's going to direct me. We'll see. Well, we will keep talking to you. I hope so. Governor John Kasich of Ohio, thank you. Thank you, Judy.